highlights of what you just saw there was me leveling the car up on the ramp. As you can see, the wheels are off the floor. Bada boom. So I can get under it to fit the engine and gearbox. As you can see from the spirit level, if I zoom in on it, it's level. Okay, it's level front to back. And although it's a little bit of a nightmare to get this on here flat. Hopefully in the center, she's level side to side. Okay, I'm fitting an engine. I'm not setting a chassis up. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Check the sill level. Yeah, I'll go with that. You can see that. There we go. All level, ready to rock and roll. What I have done previously now, off camera, motor mounts have gone uh, for the motor plates. Uh, I've cleaned the chassis rails where I'm expecting to weld. Uh, and I've removed the motor plates on that side, but I've left a tab on here. And that's just for my tie bar to come across. If it's in the wrong place, I'll just whip it off later. It's only about a 10 minute job to take out. Um, the chassis is all cleaned back. So inside I've removed all the nubs of pipe and I've smoothed the corners inside the uh, crossbars there, purely because I think I'm gonna gusset into there um, with the brackets for the transmission cross member. The transmission cross member turned up last night uh, after I'd gone home, of course it did. Um, there it is. That's off uh, a Mark 1 Capri. I managed to find it on eBay, listed for something else, but it is absolutely bang on and it does fit the gearbox perfectly. Um, I was gonna make a cross member, but you know, Ford have done that for me. So it'll be lighter, it'll work just as well. I can make some nice flat brackets to come off that or shaped brackets that'll tie into the chassis. The bell housing is now mounted on. I've used the original bell housing mounting bolts. They measured out fine. Uh, the big M10s, the new bell housing is on there. That's the one that my friend Matty sold me. Dirt cheap, gotta love him. Um, that's bolted on. And what I've done when I'll show you when I roll it over, that I've actually put some um, brand new UNC bolts through the bell housing and I've locked them with locking nylock nuts on the inside. Obviously UNC again. doing here now. Um, I've got a couple of strips of steel, quarter of an inch thick, 6.5 mil. I'm going to uh, mark these and drill it for the engine mounts here. Now you can see this is a 4.6 block. So these later blocks are cross bolted. Uh, makes them a lot stronger obviously. But I will have to make some release for that now. You can see here that that is directly under here. So if I mark for the drill holes, thus. These are, like everything else on this engine, UNC. It is originally a British engine. And I'm pretty certain they're still UNC. They might actually be metric, but I'll measure them. Um, I'm gonna drill a little tiny bit larger to allow a little bit of clearance in there anyway. And I'll mark that in a sec. And we'll see how I'm gonna continue with that. So, you can see my pencil marks here. In here, they're not very bold. I may mention before my eyes aren't very good, so I'm struggling to see them a little bit whilst doing this on camera. However, I'm going to line up with that mark now. Got my engineer's square, okay? So that's going to allow me to transcribe a line all the way down there. This is a quite a hard pencil, leaves a better mark on steel, in my opinion. Turn it around. Sorry. Thunderbugs are literally biting the heck out of me today. It's lovely having a business unit in the uh, in the countryside. However, we've got wheat growing all the way around at the moment and they are literally eating me alive. So I've now scribed two lines there and then what I'll do is I'll measure down 
to the mount holes and then I'll make a relief underneath. The relief obviously doesn't need to be super tidy. I'm trying to leave this as low as possible to allow me some room to mount the engine mount off of that. I don't know how the engine's going to fit until I get it in the car. Uh, the gearbox cross member hasn't arrived just as yet. Hopefully it's going to turn up today if ever I can find my, my uh, business unit today. Uh, they didn't turn up yesterday when they were supposed to. So I will mark that now, center punch it, drill it, uh, and continue on. Okay, so I'll speed you up for that because you probably know what I'm going to do. All right, thanks a lot. So yeah, having uh, just tried against the car, I found that that rule gives just about the right distance. Well, actually it gives spot on distance for me to drill the holes, which is good because that gives me a nice flat line to draw along. Okay, I can keep that parallel to my piece of work there. It's a bit fiddly widdly. But I can use my tri-square there to keep that level. I only need to mark where I'm going to drill. Uh, you'll notice I've been using it to stir paint with and measure paint out and I was doing some paint so it's got a little bit blathered there. Um, I do have another one somewhere. God only knows where. However, that'll be fine. So then I'm going to move you, see what I'm doing up there. So a nice solid base, centre punch, okay. So I've moved to the back of the vise there. And place this on here. Line up my centre pop, my centre punch. What I do is, Obviously you can't see exactly where it is, so what I do is a very faint tap, just enough to leave a dot. And if you can see that on camera, it's a little tiny bit low for me is that. So what I'm going to do then, put the work against the back of here. Put that in the back of my vise. And I'm going to run that back a little bit and pop it again. And pretty much bang on okay if you decide not to run it like that then all you end up doing is uh, remarking it in the wrong position because it jumps out and ends up in the original hole it's not an established technique it's just something I've taught myself over the years again turn a little bit off just going to move that across a tiny bit And a bit more actually. In my opinion, there's no such thing as it'll do. It's not right. It's wrong. Okay, so those are the two holes. I can drill these and then I'll neaten up the ends, make the reliefs for the uh, for the cross bolts, um, radius all the edges and clean that up ready for welding. That's as far as I can go at the moment. What I will do before I do that is clamp this, well I'll check this against the block, clamp the other one to it and drill it all on block at the same time. Uh, I finish this now. Uh, I had to stop purely because the drill is overheated. The batteries get really hot when you're drilling uh, large holes in thick material, especially. And as I say, this is a quarter thick. So I finished these off camera um, in little stages, letting the batteries cool. Um, wouldn't make for uh, optimal viewing. Um, you can see these are the reliefs. I cut these with a, a half inch 13 millimeter if you're a new money hole saw. 
And then what I've done is I've cut the edge with the cutting disc and just blended them in there. Same here, just put a radius on there, just purely for neatness really. That one just needs squaring up a little bit. It's a bit low on this corner, but it's nowhere near finished. So, um, I've also taken about four mil off the top there, um, four, five mil, three sixteen, something like that. And I've added a radius here purely because there's an oil gallery, I believe, behind there. Looks like an oil gallery, and I don't want to inadvertently damage that when I tighten this up by hitting any of these um, these webs here in, in the block. Uh, I also don't want to risk the edge mount sitting at an angle like this. I want it to sit back flat and smooth against these bosses. So that now fits thus. I'll remove all this um, all this oily carbony stuff that we get from electric rolling it, from heat rolling it uh, afterwards before I start welding it. What you just saw is me get the engine off the uh, off the engine stand. I popped it on the floor with a little tool I made years ago, screwed in there, just with a bell housing bolt. Um, I used that for years and years ago. I made that um, for locking um, flywheels and flex plates like that, so you can lock them then and get these bolts out. Um, the bolts in there are super duper tight. They always are. They should be thread locked as well. Um, I can't get them with my little baby ugga dugga gun. I'm gonna have to get those off in a minute. Um, I'll take the flywheel off so as it doesn't clash in the bell housing with the input shaft again and break my bell housing again. Um, off camera, I did start a video on this but it was quite long and laborious. So I've made a quarter inch thick 6.5 mil spreader plate there. You can see one of the holes went a bit pear shaped at the top. However, that fits between the block and the bell housing to space it back. I'm going to drill an observation hole in the bell housing because it hasn't got a clutch release arm hole in it. And, you know, I found a T3 exhaust flange there as well. Um, hot side flange, which I'll be needing when my turbo turns up next week, hopefully. That's going to fit in here between the gearbox and the bell housing. As I say, I'll drill a hole in the bell housing so you can see it. I've also made some longer dowels. Did those at home on the lathe. Again, I didn't video it, sorry. They were out of a metric bolt that I turned down to half inch diameter exactly. 12.65 uh, millimeters if you want to be metric. Um, those are six and a half millimeters, seven millimeters, something like that, longer. They're actually longer than they need to be, so I may need to reduce the length of those a little bit. Um, but they, the holes in the bell housing are actually drilled quite deep, so they should slot into the bell housing if they don't. I'll obviously have to adjust them and I'll just put a small smear of uh, oil on those. A uh, little bit of transmission fluid, something like that, just to help them slide in. I bolted the plates up to the engine for the engine mounts. They're in and ready to go. And you'll notice I've purchased some new stainless steel uh, set screws there, Allen headed set screws for the exhaust manifolds to go on. Um, I've taken those off because I'm going to try and swap them side to side and turn them around to feed the turbo. nerve-wracking moment there. I, uh, I ran the gearbox up, well the bell housing to the back of the block there. I did a couple of uh, impromptu measurements before I did that off camera um, just to check because the, the crank spigot area in the middle of where the flywheel goes looked actually much much deeper than the standard Rover V8. Um, it was a complete optical illusion. I measured it against the uh, standard Rover V8 I've got over in the corner and it is absolutely millimetre the same. Sorry you can hear me 
wiping the uh, perspiration off me in the background and the thunderbugs that are literally eating me alive yet again. Um, they seem to like me, I'm diabetic and I think I have sweet sweat. Anywho, um, yeah, so I was absolutely terrified putting that together. I knew it was going to be within millimetres of fitting um, and quite honestly, if it broke the bell housing again, I didn't want to see you to uh, see me crying and I would have cried a lot. Um, so what I did was I put it in gear, I ran it up a tiny little bit at a time um, and I kept turning the output shaft so it was therefore turning the input shaft and I knew that if it started to touch that would instantly bind. Now if I draw your attention to the output shaft and I appreciate this means absolutely nothing to you because you can't see the input shaft or feel it but it still turns beautifully. I can actually get my hand, I don't need to cut a hole in the bell housing. Um, I can get my hand up the back here behind the sump and you can hear the input shaft rattling in the bell housing so in the uh, sorry in the back of the crank so that's all good news that means my plate is absolutely the perfect width which is lucky because I expect this to be slightly too thick for me to have to take this off and machine a little bit down on my lathe as it turns out it's 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 to a thousandth of an inch perfect which is just Real look, really. I'd like to say I'd worked it out that way, but I didn't. That's just aluminium I bought and used. Um, and as I say, I expected it to be slightly too thick, but it wasn't. So that looks reasonably factory in there. It's not the exact same shape as the bell housing. I was using the broken one to make it, um, but I'm pretty blown pleased with that. Uh, the bolts are through. They're run up. Um, I put four bolts in just to hold the two square together. So next job, pop it in the car. Right, so... Um, ladies and gents, the engine is now in. Uh, it's not welded in, obviously, it's just sat on wooden blocks. It is reasonably level, um, to the levelness of the car, or to the levelness of the um, pinion angle, which I checked previously off camera. I've done all this off camera. It's taken three attempts to get the engine and box sat there. Um, I ended up craning it over the top. It wasn't particularly pretty. But it's in there, it's in the right position, and after several dozen uh, measurements, it's, it's in the middle of the chassis rails to within a millimetre or two. I'll move the sledgehammer. Don't even ask about that. Okay. So the engine's in its final position. Still got a metre roll there. That was just checking the distance. The distance between the rack and front pulley is good because I will have to put a crank position sensor on there. I've levelled, and it's very difficult to see and sort of establish from this angle, but I've levelled the um, base of the block where the sump bolts to level with the metre rule across the front. Now then, I've done that by eye. I can adjust that at a later date. I've set the engine as low as it will physically go. So when I've put the engine mountings in, should I need to elevate it slightly, I can do that with some spacer washers. Um, this is as low as I want it. Uh, it does sit beautifully with the engine mounts I made. If I level you out there, I think those should be a really good position actually, just to have straight mounts built out from the chassis and out from the block. So, I'm gonna start and get on with that now. Um, I need to cut some steel. There's a lot of angle grinding involved. I'll do that and let you watch it. Some of it, I think, for this time. Just apologise, I'm shouting a little bit, purely because it suddenly started to rain really, really heavily outside. Obviously this is a metal roof, so you can hear it clanking and banging on there. I built the engine mounting. As you can see, it's two thick pieces of steel sandwiched together. Um, I've put a prep on each side for the welding to help it penetrate into the steel. This part, the longer part, is going to go from the chassis rail. The shorter part should fit to the engine. Thus. Now, I'm going to attempt to get those flat. I can adjust them ever so slightly. They're only finger tight. So, 
Sorry, just paused you there for the postman. God bless him, bringing me more goodies for probably this. Uh, yeah, and it just shows a little, just to get that in position. That looks reasonably flat and straight to me. I'm doing it literally by eye. Might just come down a tiny touch like that. They are dead flat. I'm going to add gussets up here and up here and then underneath. But obviously I need the engine back out or the engine up on the ramp to do that. But I can get this now tacked in. Uh, and then I'll remove the engine mount from the car. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll weld that up on the bench over yonder. Okay. Sorry there haven't been a lot of action in this video, uh, but the engine mounts are now in. It's time has been getting on. Um, I've had to get these made quickly purely because I'm supposed to be off-site at one o'clock and it is currently three o'clock. Uh, that's the off-side mount, you can see quite nicely. I've keyed it round the um, rose joint there that supports the sear and it's a little bit too big the gap, but I can fill that, that's no problem at all, weld across that. Um, that'd be a lot easier obviously when the engine is back out of the car, it's off the blocks, it's sat on the engine mounts. These need gusseting underneath, again it needs to be up in the air but I haven't time to do it today so I'm just going to have to put it up in the air and finish that on Monday probably. There's the near side mount, it's a lot easier to see. Some nice gussets in the engine block parts, I could do those of course because I could take those off and do them on the bench. That's the mount that's on the chassis rail. It's a bit scruffy at the moment because I've done three passes on that at higher and higher currents to try and make sure it's got a really good penetration because quite honestly I'd really rather it didn't fall on the roof of the stag when I put it underneath there. Um, the angle of the engine will have to be adjusted slightly for the gearbox and the back axle. It's currently just sat still on its, uh, on its box section there. It will be moving down a little bit. Um, rocking the engine back ever so slightly but she's in uh, and although it's not in permanently it's level it's all set nicely I can obviously adjust the levels I can obviously adjust the levels um, just got to decide now where's best to route the exhaust manifolds I'm glad I left this tab here uh, for the torque arm, because as you can see there's a bolt absolutely adjacent to it, which is absolutely ideal. I can put a couple of rose joints in there, that'd be brilliant. Um, I've got some rose joints already for a, a drag bar down there that you can see, so I'll probably re repurpose those. Um, but yeah, she's in. It's not a bad four hours work really, to get that far. Um, not finished by any means, obviously, but Still pretty blooming pleased. So I will call that a day for today. I'll do a different video for the transmission cross member and on that I'll feature the mounts from underneath once they're all welded up. Um, because it's just getting too long now and I haven't time to do it today. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.